Hello viewers, welcome to Renault taking you through the story for A Level Physics Paper 2. In this video, I'm going to go through the topic of refraction of light through glass prisms. So, this video is today for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So, before I proceed, let's first look at the course outline of this paper. Physics part 2. So, LO Physics part 2 is divided into four parts. The first part is geometrical optics, where two questions come from these topics. The second part is physical optics, where two come from these topics. The third part is electrostatics and electricity, where three questions come from these topics. And the fourth part is magnetism and SC, where three questions come from these topics. So, the part of electrostatics and electricity is already available on this platform and now we are on the part of geometrical optics so the first part is not ticked because it has no calculations remember here we are interested in the calculations the second part was done third part was covered and this fourth part is what we are going to cover in this video so we are interested in the calculations but not complete notes are available in the book Mastering A Level Physics Part 2. It contains all notes of all topics, worked examples, and trial questions. For orders of this copy, you can contact the author on any of these two contacts. And a complete set of physics, A Level has three books. The first book is for Physics Part 1, then the second book is for Physics Part 2, and the third book is for Topical Question Bank. For principal math, there are three books also, Math Part 1, Math Part 2, and the Topical Question Bank. For subsidiary math, it is only one book, and the rest are for all level. So for, N, for any of these two copies, you contact the author on any of these two contacts. So now shall start our topic of refraction through of light through glass prisms. So in the previous video of refraction at plane surfaces, we looked at what we call Snell's law. And that is the law should be used more frequently in all the calculations of glass prisms. So I actually watched the previous video, I encourage you to go in the playlist and watch it before you watch this video. It is advisable to watch these videos in order of the numbers. Video number one, video number two, video number three in that order. Don't skip any. That's how you will easily follow up through this channel and that's how you will benefit better. So we shall consider a mono array of monochromatic light. We use the word monochromatic to mean light of one wavelength. It can be yellow light, red light, like that. Why? Because if we use something like white light, there will be dispersion. Where many where white light will be dispersed into a number of colors. So we prefer monochromatic light. In air, incident on a prism. The ray is refracted as shown below. So we shall draw our prism. P2 and R. Then we shall draw our ray in air. So that this A is what we call the refracting angle of the prism. So this LM is an incident ray and the angle of incidence is I1. This is the normal to the plane. Mt is the normal to the plane. This row will be refracted to meet the second. This is P2 is one refracting surface and PR is another refracting surface. So the surfaces enclosing the refracting angle are called refracting surfaces. So to meet the second refracting surface at N, so R1 is the angle of refraction at M and R2 is the angle of incidence at N. By geometry, this is the same way is equal to this. 
Then at this point, the angle, the ray is refracted to emerge out of the prism, where I2 is now the angle of emergency. Now this D, initially, in absence of this prism, this ray would have continued in this direction as shown, but because of the prism, it is refracted. Therefore, this D1 is what we call the angle of deviation of this ray. And D2 is the angle of re re deviation of this ray. Then this D is what we call the total deviation. It's called by adding these two. So let's make some simple notes. One is that A is the, is the refracting angle of the prism. We already seen that. It's also called the prism angle. The another note is that by geometry or by from triangle M and S, A is equal to R1 plus R2, that is exterior angle property. Let's look at that property. So exterior angle property states that one Two interior, the sum of two interior angles is equal to one ex opposite exterior angle. So this will be equal to these two. That is why you see A is equal to R1 plus R2. So what you are writing is very vital because it will help us in the calculations. Because sometimes they can give you this refracting angle and this R1 and you have to get R2. Then R1 is got by applying Snell's law at M. Like I told you, Snell's law will be used more frequently in this video. Actually, it is in every calculation there is Snell's law. There is Snell's law. So you have to know how to apply it. So when I apply Snell's law at M, I'll come up with NS sine I1 is equal to NG sine R1. Then also R2 is got by applying Snell's law at N, where NA sin i2 is equal to ng sin r2 where n a is the refractive index of air and ng is the refractive index of glass and the deviation by geometry d1 is equal to i1 minus r1 so all these ones are needed so far we have seen this it is needed, this is needed, this is needed, this is needed, and this is also needed. So deviation D2 is I2 minus R2. Therefore, total deviation is good by adding the 2. When I add D1 is here, D2 is here, collect like terms, I is alone and R is alone. Then I remember that R1 plus R2 is equal to A. So this, that is the expression for total deviation. You can either use this, or use this, or use this, whatever you feel like. So those formally, we can go through some of the questions. Question 1 came from your neighbor, 1995, over to question 1D, and says, A ray of light is incident on a prism of refractive index 1.3. And the refracting angle is 72 degrees. The ray emerges from the prism at an angle of 43 degrees. Find Roman 1, the angle of incidence, and Roman 2, the deviation of the ray. So we shall make an illustration. So that is the prism, relative index is 1.3, refracting angle is 72. This is the angle of incidence. We don't know it. But the angle of emergence is known. It is 43. So what they want, they want this angle I1. The good thing we know this, and we know this. So you can first use, apply snail's law at this point to get R2. So snail's law at N, we shall come up with N sine r2 is n sine r2 is equal to sine 43 because 
this relative index of air is equal to 1. I think you remember that in the previous video. So with that I can substitute for n and, that, and then get the value of R2. And so now that I know this, I remember that by geometry, R2 plus R1 is equal to A. And that means I can get R1. Substitute and get the value of R1. So now that I have R1, I can easily get this by applying Snell's law at M. So when I apply Snell's law at M, I'll come up with sine I1 is equal to N sine R1. Substitute for N, simplify and make I1 the subject. And that is what they wanted. Then for part B, the deviation. Deviation, it is total of angles, total angles of incidence, I1 plus I2 minus A. So substitute for I1, I2, and A. Then use a calculator to get the output. That was question one. Then question two came f says a prism of refractive index 1.5 and refracting angle 60 degrees has an angle of incidence 45 degrees. Determine Roman one the angle of refraction on the first refracting surface. The angle of refraction on the second refracting surface the angle of emergency and the angle of deviation. So we shall first draw our prism, then we locate the rays as the angle of incidence in refracted to meet the to meet the second refracting surface. So this is 1.5 and this is 60. This is 45. So first they want this R1. The good thing we know this, so we shall use Snell's law at M. So Snell's law is very common. You cannot run away from it. So apply Snell's law at M, substitute, simplify, and make R1 the subject. Then the second one is the one this value of R2. So by geometry, this plus this is equal to 60. So come and substitute and get the value of R2. Then Roman 3, they want the angle of emergence, which is I2. So still I shall apply Snell's law at N, which gives you that. Substitute, simplify, and get the value of I2. Then lastly, the angle of deviation. I1 plus I2 minus A. So substitute and get the output, and that is what they wanted. So Snell's law can never be skipped. So the questions we have looked at have been having no condition, but now what if they give some conditions? For example, in this case, we have began with a condition for deviation to be minimum. In the previous questions, they have just asked for total deviation, but what if they put the word minimum deviation? How do you handle such questions? So in that case, we should remember that for minimum deviation to occur, the ray must be passing symmetrically through the prism and the angle of incidence must be, must be equal to the angle of emergence. That is, I1 is equal to I2, which is I, and R1 is equal to R2, which is R. That means now that now the diagram will be in this form. For a ray of light passing symmetrically through the glass prism, the diagram will be in this case. So it is similar, only that now I1 is equal to I2 and R1 is equal to R2. I think we realize that this is equal to this, okay? Then this is equal to this and also D1 is equal to D2. So those are the conditions for minimum deviation. So when we apply, when we connect it to what we have been doing, prism angle is, remember, is R1 plus R2, so in this case it will be 2R, implying that R is equal to A over 2. Mm -hmm. 
Then from the formula for deviation, minimum deviation capital D will be I plus I R plus R, which is 2I minus 2R, which is the same as 2I minus A, implying that A is equal to D plus A over 2. So here you can also say 2 in brackets I minus R, it is also K. But just because I wanted to make R, I the subject, so I is equal to D plus A over 2, and R is A over 2. So when you know that, we shall take Snell's law at M, and it will give us Na sine I is equal to Ng sine R. And when you substitute, we shall come up with that. Remember that Na is equal to 1, therefore we have Ng or refractive index of glass or the, the glass prism is equal to sine d plus a over 2 divided by sine a over 2. So this formula, whenever they talk about minimum deviation, that minimum deviation is this capital D. And the refractive index, when minimum deviation is known, can be got from this formula. So with that, we can go through these questions. First question came from your name, 1996, part 2, question 1c. Roman 1 says, for a ray of light passing through a prism, what is the condition for minimum deviation to occur? Then part B, if the angle of minimum deviation in Roman 1 above is 41, for a glass prism of refractive angle 60, find the refractive index of glass. So they have first asked for condition, so shall just state the condition that one, the ray must be passing symmetrically through the prism and two, that the angle of incidence must be equal to the angle of emergence. The form and two shall remember the formula because we know D, this is capital D and this is capital A. So come and substitute for D and for A here and here. You'll come up with that as the refractive index they want. Then question 2 came from your NEB 2011 paper 2 question 2D and says, D Roman 2, calculate the minimum deviation produced by a, by the 60 degree glass prism if the refractive index of glass is 1.5. So you know that from that formula you can substitute for N and for A and remain with D as the only unknown. So here I have to look for ways of making D the subject. So when I simplify, arc sine of 0 0.75 gives you 48.59. Then multiply, thread by, multiply both sides by 2 to give you that. Then take this one this side to come up with that. And that will be the angle of minimum deviation they wanted. Question 3 came from your NEB 2009, paper 2, question 3D, and it says, a ray of light incident at an angle I on a prism of angle A passes through it symmetrically. Part A, Roman 1. Write the expression for the deviation D of the ray in terms of A, I, and A. Roman 2. Find the value of D if the angle of the prism is 60 degrees and the refractive index of glass is 1.48. So first we shall state the expression, D will be equal to 2i minus a, I think you remember that. Then for Roman 2, the value of D, we shall remember the formula that sine i, i is d plus a over 2, is equal to n sine a. Then we shall substitute for a and for n, and remain with D as the only unknown. So arc sine 0 0.74 gives you that. Then apply, take this to this side to give you that. And take this to this side to give you D as that. And that is what they wanted. Question 4 came from your name, 1994, paper 2, question 1c. And it says, a prism, a glass prism of refractive index 1.5 and refracting angle 60 degrees is completely immersed in a liquid of refractive index 
If a ray of light passes symmetrically through the glass prism, calculate Roman 1, the angle of incidence, and Roman 2, the angle of deviation. So this one is a little funny because it is the ones I've been dealing with, the prism has been placed in air, but now it is placed in a liquid. And this liquid, its refractive index is not 1. For air, it was 1 and it was okay. But now it is not 1, meaning we have to cater for it. Because it is symmetrical, this I will be equal to this I, this R will be equal to this R, and this D will be equal to this D. The prism angle is that. So for symmetry, A is equal to R is equal to A over 2, which is 30 degrees. Then taking Snell's law at M, which I'll come up with NL sin I is equal to NG. So NL sin I is equal to NG sin R. Then you substitute for NL, NG, and R. You remain with I as the only unknown. So simplify and make I the subject. And that will be the angle of incidence. Then the angle of deviation is 2 in brackets I minus R. You can use this, like I told you, you can either use that or you can use 2I minus A. N of the 2 is okay. So substitute for I, R, to give you that as the answer they wanted. Question 5 came from your name of November 1998, part 2, question 1D, Roman 1, and says, A ray of light propagating in a liquid is incident on a prism of refracting angle 50 degrees. And the refractive index 1.6 at an angle of 30 degrees as shown in figure above. If the ray passes symmetrically through the prism, find the refractive index of the liquid. So still we shall have to redraw the diagram. To help us answer the questions. Okay. So symmetrically meaning this angle is equal to this angle. This is equal to this. This is equal to this. So by symmetry, this 50 is equal to 2R, meaning R is 25 degrees. And now that I know R, I can take Snell's law at M. So NG sine R is equal to NL sine 30. And that helps us to give us the sub substitute and be able to get this unknown of NL. So that has been the condition for minimum deviation. What if the condition is about minimum angle of incidence. So should remember that when the angle of incidence is minimum, it implies that the emergent, the emergent ray glazes the second refracting surface. So the emergent ray glazes the surface. It does not go at an, in other words, the angle is zero to the surface. Or it is 90 from the normal as you shall see in the diagram. So I think you realize that here, it glazes this surface, meaning this I2 is equal to 90 degrees. So when this is 90 degrees, that is when this angle of I is minimum. 
So R1 is good by applying Snell's law at N. So when I apply Snell's law at N, I'll come up with that. Simplify. To come up with that. Then I will. So this sine 90 is 1. That's why you have here NG R2 sine is NG sine R2 is equal to 1. Then I also remember from geometry that R1 is equal to A minus R2. So this helps me to get R1, and from R1 I can get R2, sorry, from this helps me to get R2, and from R2 I can get R1 using this refracting angle. And therefore, the minimum angle of incidence I1 can be got by applying Snell's law at M. So in prisms, there is no way you can run away from Snell's law. It will always appear. So apply Snell's at N. So sorry at M, I can come up with that. Why I can get R1 because R1 is known, N is known, and N is known. And that will be the minimum angle of incidence. So deviation for minimum angle of incidence can also be got using that the general formula and with that shall can go through these questions question one came from UNEP 1996 for one paper two question one b and it says monochromatic light is incident at an angle of 38 degrees on a glass prism of refractive index 1.5 the emergent light glazes the surface of the prism as shown. Roman 1. Calculate the angle of refraction R. Roman 2. Find the critical angle C of the glass air interface. And Roman 3. Find the refracting angle A of the prism. So we shall start with Roman 1. So taking Snell's law at the first refractive refracting surface, I'll come up with sine 38 equal to 1.5 sine r. Simplify and make r the subject. Then for Roman 2, I'll take Snell's law at the second refracting surface. N sine c is equal to sine 90. Substitute and make, sim, sim, make c the subject. And that will be the critical angle. Then for Roman 3, the refracting angle will go by adding R1 plus R2, which gives you 66.04 degrees. So angles are to two decimal places. Question 2 came from UNEP 2018, paper 2, question 2C. And it says, a ray of light is refracted through a prism in a plane perpendicular to its edge. The angle of incidence is 30 degrees. And the refractive index of the prism is 1.5. Calculate the angle of the prism such that the ray does not emerge when it strikes the second surface. So you need to make an illustration of what is given. So NG is 1.5. Then the angle of incidence is 30. Okay, so I'll come and text Nels at M where N sine 30 is equal to N sine R1. Substitute for N, simplify and make R1 the subject. Okay, then take a Snell's law at N. Sine 90 is equal to N sine R2. Substitute for N, simplify and make R2 the subject. So I have R1, I have R2, meaning I can get the refracting angle. Substitute and get the angle they want. Then question 3 came from UNEP of 2001, paper 2, question 1b, and says, Monochromatic light is incident on one refracting surface, one refracting surface over prism of refracting angle 60 degrees made of glass of refractive index 1.5 
calculate the least angle of incidence, not this word least, angle of incidence for, a, for the ray to emerge through the second refracting face. So when you see the word least angle of incidence, it means it glazes the second refracting surface. So I shall redraw it. Okay, then shall come apply Snell's law at n, where n sine r2 is equal to 1 or sine 90. Substitute, simplify, and make r2 the subject. Then by geometry, r1 is equal to a minus r2, which gives you 18.19. Then take its next at m, n sine r1 is equal to sine i1. So substitute, simplify, and make i1 the subject. And that is what they wanted. Question 4 came from your NEB 2020, part 2, question 2c. And it says, figure 1 shows a ray of monochromatic light incident on a triangular prism glass prism at an angle of incidence theta which is here light just emerges from the face AB just emerges from the face AB of the prism the speed of light in the prism is 1.2 1. sorry 2.0 is 0.8 Roman 1 calculate the refractive index of glass Roman 2 Find the value of theta and Roman 3. Explain what happens when the angle of incidence is greater than theta. So we'll start with Roman 1. Roman 1, I think you remember the definition for refract absolute refractive index. In terms of velocity, it is C over V. And C is a constant, which is 3x18. V has been given, meaning you will come up with 1.5 as the refractive index they wanted. Then for Roman 2, we shall text this law at the interface AC first. Interface AC, text this law to be n sine r2 is equal to 1. So you come and text this law to come up with substitute, give make r1 this r2 the subject. By geometry, R1 is plus R2 is equal to 60, therefore R1 will be 18.19. Then text Snell's law at interface AB, sine theta is equal to n R1. Substitute for n and R1 and make theta the subject. Then Roman 3, which is that the ray will emerge through phase SC. And why? It is because the angle of incidence on the face AC will be less than the critical angle. That was question 4. Now question 5 came from UNEP, 1999, paper 2, question 1b, and says, Monochromatic light is incident at an angle of 45 degrees on a glass prism of refracting angle 70 degrees in air. The emergent light glazes, you know this word glazes, the other refracting surface of the prism. Find the refractive index of glass. So still we can shall make our sketch. Then shall come and by geometry, this plus this gives you that. That is equation one. So then equation two. This was a little funny because it involved simultaneous equations. Then taking Snell's law at n, one is equal to 
n sin c. Therefore, sin c is equal to 1 over n, and that is equation 2. Then taking Snell's law at m here, it means sine 45 is equal to n sine r. But I remember that r is equal to 70 minus c. Then I expand this using compound angle formula to come up with that. Then I remember that sine c is equal to 1 over n, which is here now. So when I simplify this and this cancels, that's why here I have on the course 70. Then collect like terms, take this one this side to come up with this line. So use a calculator, the whole of this gives you this to four decimal places, and sine 70 gives you this to four decimal places. Then cos, make cos see the subject, I'll come up with this. Then from there, I remember an identity that sine squared c plus cos squared c is equal to 1. Then I'll substitute for sine squared c and cos squared c. Then I'll open brackets to come up with that. So the whole of this squared gives you this. Then this one it is n squared which comes out. That's why you see a 1 over n squared because it is common in both. There is n squared here and there is also n squared here. So when I factorize out 1 over n squared here I remain with 1 which is here. So now I have only one unknown meaning I can get the value of n which is a positive value. Then question 6 came from question 6 says a glass prism of refractive index 1.52 and refracting angle 60 degrees is immersed in a liquid of refractive index 1.25. A ray of monochromatic light incident at an angle I on one face refracting face at M and emerges along the other refracting surface at M as shown in the figure above. Find Roman 1 the angle of incidence I1 and Roman 2 the deviation produced. So taking the at right N, I'll come up with that. Substitute, simplify, and get the value of R2. By geometry, R1 is equal to 60 minus that to give you 4.68. Then taking the at right M, I'll come up with that. Substitute, simplify, and get the value of I1. Roman 2, they wanted deviation, so deviation is I1 plus I2 minus A. Substitute for I1, I2, and A to come up with that as the deviation they wanted. That has been the second condition. The first one was for minimum deviation. The second one has been for minimum angle of incidence. Now the third one will be for total internal reflection. In the previous video, we saw what critical angle is and what total internal reflection is. So what if they bring that condition under prisms, what do you do? So in prisms, total internal reflection occurs first of all if the angle of incidence at a refracting surface is greater than the critical angle of the glass prism at that refracting surface. This means that at each refracting surface the angle of incidence must first be compared with the, tot with the critical angle to find out whether total internal reflection at that surface occurs or it doesn't. So roughly you get a calculator and press arc sign 1 over ng and see if the value you get is smaller than the critical 
if the value you get is bigger than the angle of incidence at that point, otherwise Torrington reflection has to occur. But in most cases, when there is Torrington reflection, they, they will talk about it in the question. So let's see this question. 1993, paper 2, question 3c, and it says, A ray of monochromatic light enters one face of a, of a 60 degree glass prism and is totally internally reflected. So most of they will talk about it at the next face, Roman 1. Draw a diagram to show the path of light through the prism. And Roman 2. Calculate the angle of incidence at the face, at the first face, if the refractive index of glass is 1.53 and the angle of incidence at the second face is 42 degrees. So we shall need to make a sketch, an illustration. So, if this is 60, it means that all the rest will be 60 because angles of triangle must add up to 180. So that is an equatorial triangle. So we have that angle of incidence, which is refracted to meet the second refracting surface. And at that surface, it is totally internally reflected to meet the third face. So here, first of all, this is 60, this is 90, meaning the angle here will be 30. If it is 30, I remember that angles on a straight line add up to 180, meaning to get this angle to be 180 minus 30 to give you 150. So this is where the 150 came from. It will help us in the in when it comes to Roman 2. So for Roman 2, they told us, Calculate, calculate the angle of incidence at the first face if the relative index of glass is 1.53 and the angle of incidence at the second face is 42. So here, when it reaches zero, we didn't complete our array, it has to be refracted away from the normal because it is moving from a more dense to a less dense medium. So, in for Roman 2, we have beta as 42, we have A as 60, we have N as 1.53. Therefore, by geometry, this plus this must be equal to this. I think we've been using that. Therefore, I can get R1 as 18 degrees. Then taking Snell's law at x, I'll come up with sine i1 is equal to n sine r1. Then substitute, simplify, and get the value of i1. Okay. So question 2 came from your name, 1997, but 2, question 1d, and it says the figure below shows. Array of light incident on a glass prism of refractive index 1.5. Calculate the angle of emergence of the ray. So it's the diagram. What I'm going to do is I'll redraw the diagram to show a complete ray. So that will be the angle of incidence. At this point, it will be refracted to meet this other surface at C, where there will be total internal reflection to meet the third surface, and it will emerge out of the prism. Okay, so taking Snell's law at B, sine 45 is equal to N sine R1. So simplify and make around the subject. Then by for this triangle B C X 
angles of the triangle add up to 180 therefore this plus this plus this plus this will be equal to 180 which is here to so substitute for arrow one and be able to get the value of alpha so alpha is good this is, it is here meaning I can also get beta so beta will be 90 minus alpha which is that and now critical angle is assigned 1 over refractive index which is 41.81 so this is why I told you at first that you have to test to find out whether the there is total internal reflection or there is no now if you look at this question they didn't talk about total internal reflection anywhere but when we reach here you realize that this value of beta we have got is which is the angle of incidence at that point at C is 73.13 however the critical angle is 41.81 meaning this one has already exceeded the critical angle implying that there must be total internal reflection and that is why from this point you are seeing total internal reflection occurring so when they talk, don't talk about it remember to test Okay, that's what I've been talking about. That's for an isosceles triangle, R1 is equal to R2, which is that. And by the principle of reversibility of light, we already talked about this in the previous video for refraction at plane surfaces. So I2 will be 45. And therefore, the angle of incidence, will, angle of emergency is 45. Then question 3 came from your name, 2000 paper 2 question 2c and it says a ray of light is incident on face AD of a glass block as shown in figure above. The refractive index of a material of a glass block is 1.52. If the ray emerges normally through the face BC after total internal reflection calculate the angle of incidence i so you need to redraw the ray to trace the path of that ray so you come and redraw the diagram first then we shall put the angle of incidence Yes, so at this point it will be refracted to meet first DC. And at first DC there will be total internal reflection to meet first BC normally. This normally means 90 degrees. Okay. So by geometry, this is a right angle triangle. This one. Meaning this is 90, this is 60, therefore the remainder is 90 minus 60, which is 30. And also the whole of this is right angle, meaning if this is 30, this would be 60. Then laws of reflection of light, this angle will be equal to this angle. Okay, then from there, still this can be got this plus this. Because this is 90, so this plus this will be equal to 90. So you can come and write that. For the refracting surfaces, AD and DC, this plus this will be equal to this refracting angle. Therefore, R is equal to 30 degrees. Then taking Snell's law at M, N sine R is equal to sine I. So substitute, simplify, and get the value of i. And that's what they wanted. Then question 4 came from your name, 2015 paper 2, question 2c. And it says, the figure below shows an isosceles prism, ABC, of refractive index 1.51 dipped in a liquid with its refracting edge downwards 
a ray of light incident on the prism at an angle i equal to this emerges perpendicularly through the prism. The good thing they already already drew for you the ray. Calculate the refractive index of the liquid. So they have already drawn the ray, but we shall still need to redraw it so that we easily get the angles they want. So that's what was drawn. Then we shall put more angles. This will be R1. This will be R2. R2, laws of reflection. This is also R2. That will also be R2. Because it is an isosceles. Therefore, for triangle ABC. This plus this plus this add up to 180. Therefore, R2 is 50. But we know that this plus this is equal to 80. Therefore, R1 can be got. Okay. Then take its next law at surface SC here. N liquid sign I is equal to NG sign R1. And R1 is 30. Then sine I was told we were given it as 34.6. So I can make in the subject, and that's what they wanted. So that has been the third condition for total internal reflection. What if there is now dispersion? Remember, we have been using monochromatic light to avoid something called dispersion of white light. Now, what if there is dispersion? What? How can you deal with such? So, dispersion, first of all, is the splitting or separation of white light into its component colors according to wavelength. So, the spectrum of white light, as we already know, has seven component colors, namely and these are the colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So when white light passes through the prism, it will be split into its component colors. We start with red and end with violet. So along the way, these are the ones, colors which are there. Shall I just put dashes? So in this case, a ray of light, white light undergoes dispersion, and why it is because refractive index of a material of, of the prism is different for is different for different color of the spectrum. For each color has its own refractive index. Red has its own, violet has its own blue green yellow each one has its own refractive index therefore to there will be dispersion then we should note that the refractive index is minimum for red and maximum for violet that is why red is here and violet is here Then you should also realize that the relative index for yellow light is between red and violet. If you look at these colors, remember they are seven, and yellow is at the mid midpoint. That is why we say it is between red and violet, and therefore its refractive index is taken to be the average refractive index of the prism. So now we shall go to dispersion of white light with a condition that the prism is small angled. So we shall have white light. And here we shall use three colors. The one will be red. Another one will be yellow. 
and the other one will be blue. So I've chosen these three colors because yellow is at the midpoint of red and blue. You should look at this. We are interested in blue, there is blue and red. So if I remove this one and this one, I will have this at the midpoint. So I have deviations, but deviations shall look at the one for red and the one for blue. So yeah, I shall put B, not V blue this one will now be the mean deviation for both red and blue and we also have what we call angular separation this is the angle the difference between the two deviations is the angular separation between red and blue rays so let's talk about that theta angular dispersion between red and blue rays and is given by the difference in the deviation of the two colors now the good thing we said, the prism is a small angled prism, meaning that the deviations can be got using this formula for a small angled prism. So deviation by red light is n in brackets n r minus 1. Deviation by blue light is n in brackets a in brackets n b minus 1. Therefore, angular dispersion can be got by subtracting. Open brackets and simplify to come up with this as the formula for angular dispersion so what we should note is that the mean deviation of blue and red light is that one produced by the yellow light because it was at the midpoint and to be given by dy equal to a in brackets ny minus 1 so with that we shall go through these questions question 1 came from your name 2002 paper 2 question 2c and says light of two wavelengths is incident at a small angle on a thin prism thin means it is a small angle prism of refracting angle five degrees and refractive index indices this and this for the two wavelengths find the angular separation of the two wavelengths after refraction by the prism We can make a sketch if you want, but all you're interested in is the formula for angular separation. So we have d1, d2, and the angular separation will be that theta. And that theta will be given by d1 my d2 minus d1. Substitute for d2 and d1 and then get the answer they want. Question 2 came from your name, 2010 paper 2, question 2c, and says, a prism of refracting angle 60 degrees has refractive indices, this and this, for red and violet light respectively. When white light is incident on one face of the prism, red light undergoes minimum deviation. Okay, calculate the angle of incidence of white light, two, angle of emergence for violet light, and three, angular width of the spectrum. So there we shall need to make a sketch. So white light to be dispersed, one will be for red. So for red, they said minimum deviation. That is why this is equal to this and this is equal to this. But for violet, they didn't talk about minimum deviation, meaning they are different. So here we shall have R1, R2, and here it will also be different from this. So at minimum deviation using red light, N red, remember minimum deviation, angle of refract R is equal to A over 2. So come and substitute and make I the subject. 
that will be the angle of incidence. What about the angle of emergence of violet light? The one that's value of I2. So taking Snell's law at the first refracting surface of violet light, we shall come up with that. Then we substitute and get the value of R1 as 29.7. R2 by geometry will be 30.30 and therefore take Snell's law at the second refractive surface for violet light will give you this meaning IV is that and that's the value they wanted then for Roman 3 they want the angular width of the spectrum Angular width is the sum as angular dispersion or angular separation, which will be 0 0.84. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on refraction through lenses. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that you can all benefit 